Heather, if you're ready. I will call to order a regular meeting of the board of Wellington Board of Selectmen. Today is Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. Um, the next item, second item on the agenda is approval of minutes. We have several minutes in your packet um, to approve. Anyone, anyone, I'll would, start. Oh, go ahead, John. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the uh, minutes of the special meeting on February 1st, 21 as, 2021 as submitted. I'll second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. For it. Oops, sorry, went out of sequence this time. Blessington. Aye. Brent? We can't hear you, Liza. No, nope. <laughs> just raise your hand or say no. Thumb up at the Wyshynski. Aye. Okay. I will make a motion to accept our regular meeting minutes of February 1st. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by John. Any discussion? Seeing none, I will call for a vote. Blessington? Aye. Ferris? Can you hear me now? Yes. Wyszynski? Aye. Uh, motion carries. It's down to one. I'll make a motion to approve our February 8th, 2021 special meeting minutes. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Oh no, I'll call for a vote, sorry. Blessington? Aye. Burns? Aye. Wyszynski? Aye. All right, motion carries. Um, I do, and I probably should have put this in the discussion of any one of them, but really want to um, make note that this is a, an incredibly busy time. We have lots of meetings, a lot of discussion. Um, and while Heather's job encompasses many, many things and many moving parts, um, one of the important aspects of her job is our minute. So I want to thank her for the um, hard work and timely work to get these out um, to us. And, and I think um, she's certainly gotten a lot more comfortable with her uh, meeting minutes, which I promised her would happen mm -hmm. um, when she started with us. So thank you to Heather for all her work with that. All right. The next item on our agenda is present to speak. Um, if you would like to speak, you do have the ability to unmute yourself. You do not have to be on camera um, to speak. You can stay, remain off camera. I ask that you state your name for the record and limit yourself to two minutes. I see uh, Willington Public Library would like to speak. <laughs> Hi, my name is Karen Ann Caldwell. I apologize for being on the Willington Public That's Library okay. website instead of my own. Um, I am currently the chair of the Willington Library Board and you do have on the agenda that we do need a new member. Um, I would like to point out that Rebecca Card Cartabiano, I hope I pronounced that right, is here. Um, I love the library board. Um, I think we're doing a great job right now, but something that has been lacking in the board <laughs> has been some experience that Rebecca has. Um, the current board members are predominantly either teachers or former teachers, and during budget time, it shows up that we don't have a lot of financial background, and we really, really could use someone who has a financial background with a nonprofit and so when I read Rebecca's letter of interest, I was very interested in getting her on board because of her background. Thank you. Thank you. And in uh, including your packet, you will all see a, a letter from um, Karen Ann as well. All right, is there anyone else present to speak? Yes, I would like to speak. Okay. If you just identify um, yourself. And just, say that. <laughs> just identify yourself for the record, please. Hello. My name is Rebecca Cartabiano, and I just want to say that I am interested in the open library board position, and I am a Willington resident and active library patron, and I would love to help the library with its projects. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else present to speak? All right. If you would like to speak, there'll be another opportunity towards the end of the meeting. I will move on to correspondence. 
in your packet, you will see a list of uh, correspondence. One was um, uh, a letter about the award for a steep grant, as well as, and this doesn't play well on camera, but I'm going to show you a nice fancy. Um, it's listed out there, a uh, Census Bureau, thank you. The Census Bureau hereby recognizes the town of Willington as an invaluable member of the 2020 Census Community Partnership and Engagement Program. We appreciate the efforts you made in making the partnership program a success and helping achieve a successful 2020 census. Signed, Dr. Stephen D. Dillingham, Director, U.S. Census Bureau. So it's very fancy, very nice. Yes, John. Um, do we by any chance have any numbers or anything, or is this just a not pretty piece of paper? Thank this you. This is a nice thank you for participating. If you remember, we did have a, uh, they came to us and talked to us about setting up a, a group. Nothing with the census went exactly how anyone planned it, thanks to um, a nice, healthy pandemic. So I, I know they didn't anticipate numbers coming out um, this fast. So as soon as we have some solid numbers um, directly from the census, I will share those. Certainly we'll put those out in the public and I'll share them with the board. It usually takes a while. A while. Like a year while. And I think it's going to take a while more. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm still <laughs> well, not sure I'm... how accurate. I'm afraid we might um, lose in that deal simply because a lot of UConn students weren't physically here sleeping in Willington where they normally sleep on April 1st. So um, we'll see how that plays out. Okay. Any questions about correspondence? All right. Seeing none, um, I'll move on to uh, first selectman status update. Um, we are still working with DEET to um, work out the details of the contract for the grant for the um, work at the Old Town Hall, including the septic and interior renovations. So we'll keep you posted as that moves forward. The Emergency Communications Task Force put out a survey. Um, so hopefully you all saw that. We um, posted it on social media. We sent it out and it's on our website. Um, it was sent out in the school's digital pack, backpack, and we'll start sharing those places um, at least one more time to give people an opportunity to respond. As you know, uh, it's a great way for us to get information back. We don't always get um, a large number, but at last count, we had um, about 200, and I think it was 250-ish surveys, um, which is a, a pretty good number if you equate that to um, sometimes how many votes we have in a um, budget referendum. So a good representation. So those, um, as we close that survey and we meet again, um, the task force, I'm sure will move forward with their recommendations to this board um, and we'll get back to you with that. Let's see, uh, the school building committee has not met since we last met. We meet next Monday um, at 6.30 here on the Zoom. So look for that link. There is um, a separate board, um, um, area under minutes and agendas, and we're going to make sure that they get onto the calendar as well. So if someone were looking for information about the school building committee, if you look under the minutes and agendas section from our homepage, you'll see on either side school building committee. So if you receive public notices, you want to go in and update um, if you had just specific committees, or if you said all, then you would get the um, school building committee in your um, email blast from the town. Uh, the furnace replacement in finance, if you uh, recall, we um, chose a vendor for that. I still need to go before the Board of Finance to ask for a line item transfer um, out of our current fiscal budget. So I'll be doing that this Thursday. And then uh, we hope to have the work done as soon as possible um, after that. So we have, while we um, chosen a vendor and um, our public works director has spoken with them that we do um, have the funds tentatively. Um, we can't commit and sign off on anything until the board of finance has agreed to that line item transfer. Um, but if everything goes um, favorably, then uh, we hope maybe next week they'll be able to begin work, but we cannot enter into any kind of contract with them just yet. And they're aware of that. The low SIP grant I'm sorry, the lot SIP grant for um, the project on Route 32. Um, we will also in that same meeting to the Board of Finance be going to them asking for the line item transfer that we discussed out of our current um, fiscal budget to cover the cost of design. And that was again, $22,000 for uh, 
we'll call it a million dollars, it's a dollar less than a million dollar project. Um, but because, well, because things are the way they are, I have yet another <laughs> tragic uh, repair here at the town office building. The um, small flat roof section over the kitchen and that common room door area and the food um, pantry is uh, leaking all over the place. So there are currently buckets in the hallway, buckets in the kitchen. Um, Public Works came through and removed the wet uh, and fallen broken ceiling tiles and the insulation out of that area it was coming through one of the light fixtures. So we currently uh, do not use the electricity um, in the ceiling of that room and that's a problem. Um, so we do uh, Troy's meeting with a contractor to take a look at that and we did file an insurance claim. So trying to pinpoint where it's leaking from, it's uh, kind of what you pick one spot and it moves to another area. So I'll have more on what that will entail um, when we meet again. But just know if you come to visit us and we don't turn the light on in the kitchen for you, there's water coming out of it. And they have been um, shoveling off that flat area so it doesn't collect with snow, um, but that doesn't seem to matter. There's enough of a uh, deficit there. All right, and I think that's all of my projects um, for you tonight. That's not true. Um, at our next meeting, I do intend to talk about um, the mold uh, in the basement, and the air quality test, and um, discuss our options for mitigation and document retention. So look uh, for that at our March 1st meeting. Any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Public Works. Troy is here. All right. Can you hear me okay? We can. All right. So uh, things we've been doing, uh, we've been cleaning sight lines around town, uh, the trash at the park. We installed all new light bulbs at our garage. Now we can actually see half the lights were burnt out. So put some daylight bulbs in there and you need sunglasses now. Um, they checked sections and cleaned off catch basin tops. Um, Erica touched on this. We shoveled the roof off and we tore down the insulation and the ceiling tiles down in the kitchen area. Uh, Linden Tree has been removing some hazardous trees on old farms and by the school. There's about a dozen trees that need to come down due to the emerald ash borer. Uh, we've washed the trucks and we've did a pickup and delivery of a tractor for the school, just a lawnmower they use down to Pat's power equipment. And we've been plowing the roads when it snows and that's kind of what we've been doing. Troy, when I came through, I saw them working this morning um, and, and <laughs> our many conversations today, I meant to ask you, they're right now cleaning some on the school side. Yep. Are they gonna be removing any on the opposite side of yep. Old Farms? They're gonna remove about six trees on the opposite side. In, so this, you... in this project? Yes, yep. Oh, yep. Okay. Yep. All right, it's a, it's a lot of trees. Um, any questions about what Troy's reported on thus far? No, um, their favorite thing to be doing is driving around in circles around town and plowing. So I think they might get another chance to do that on uh, Thursday and Friday. So I'm thankful um, that our crew is out there and, and working so hard. So with that, Troy, do you um, do you have an update on your snow budget for us? Yep, currently. Kind of yep. keep us on track. All right, so we've actually been out a total of uh, 13 times, and that's 123 hours of plowing and sanding that the guys have been out. Um, we've gone through 1,655 tons of salt, and the total cost for the budget right now with that is $59,193.53. That's what we've used year to date. And um, John and, and Liza, I think, uh, of those 123 hours, not all of them have come in overtime. Some of them um, have been in their regular work hours. And for the contractor hours are in there as well, right? Yes, yep. yep. His hours are less than the 123 though, is that correct? Yeah, there's a few times he hasn't come in. If it's during the day where it's just like a sanding trip, the guys will double up on the runs. <laughs> How I, there was a lot of talk this weekend um, about salt and um, people having to wait a long time to get it, not being able to get salt. How are we with salt? Currently. Well, currently our shed is completely full. Um, they haul loads to us on Saturday, um, but they are having a problem with the salt. I mean, 
trying to catch up with the, the contractor that we do have says they guarantee, you know, our salt delivery within 24 hours, but still it's, it's a challenge when it snows every other day or when we have back-to-back -back storms like this, because our salt, our salt shed is smaller. So we can only fit about 200 ton in there. And on these long storms, we use all of that. So it's, once it snows again, we're filling back up, so. And when you put that into perspective, the fact that we've used, you know, 655 ton, that's a lot of salt. Um, I am thankful that last night's um, weather event was a, a non, a real non-event. Our, um, your crews didn't go out at all this weekend, correct? Yeah. Um, that's probably the first time in a while they haven't had to be out on a, a weekend or a night. Um, and they actually got the holiday off this time. So um, well earned for sure. Again, I know it's part of their job, um, but it doesn't go unnoticed that it's, uh, it's not something everybody can do and is willing to do. So I appreciate how hard they work. And they're not always here for us, um, for them to hear us say that. So please, kudos to your staff. Any questions about public works and or salt? All right. Thank you, Troy. Um, and Troy, we will not be offended if you choose to end your evening with us. All right, moving on to new business. Um, this item is a library board appointment. You should all have in your packet um, a couple of things you'll see in last month, we received a notification from member Sarah Jean and she was resigning from the library board. I wanna thank Sarah for her willingness to serve, uh, but that leaves us with yet another opening. Um, and we have had one individual come forward, reached out to the library board. You'll see um, not only to Karen Ann, who's the current library board chair speak this evening, but included a letter. Um, and there is um, also a letter of interest from Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca, I hope I say, I have one of those names, I get it. Is it Cartabiano? Um, of her interest. And um, I, I believe we've had multiple openings on the library board. Um, this should fill it and I, and I hope we're able to maintain this board for some time. They're, they're doing some tough work over there. Um, and I think Rebecca had shown some interest before. And so um, while there wasn't a spot for everyone, um, I'm glad to see that her interest in serving the library board is still there um, and that she's come forward. This is the time um, in a meeting if somebody had interest and they were with us and they wanted to speak to anything outside of um, the letter that they've shown us that we give them the opportunity to speak. Rebecca did speak a little bit earlier, but John or Liza, is there anything you wanted to ask or Rebecca, is there anything additional you wanted to share with us and do not feel obligated? <laughs> John? <laughs> no, I think I, I think we covered it. Okay, in your letter certainly, uh, you know, it speaks for itself. It, it definitely gives us a lot of information about you, John. Uh, I'm not, uh, not very happy right now. Uh, the first I heard that Sarah Jean had resigned was when I got my packet for this meeting on Friday. Uh, we had the letter from her in the packet. We also had the letter from uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Karen Ann, and uh, also from Rebecca. Now, this is a uh, a political and elected position, and once upon a time, there was a uh, there was a custom in the town where if someone resigned from a board from an elected position, the chairman of at least that political party, maybe the chairman of both political parties would get a message saying, this person resigned, do you wish to uh, endorse anybody? Uh, now we've had somebody endorsed by a member of, or by the chair of the library board. Hi, Rebecca, I don't know you, I've never met you. I'm sure you're a nice person. Your letter is very, uh, very, um, encouraging it's you have a lot of uh, talent a lot of ed education a lot of experience uh now i would recall that the last time we had a person resign from the board it was a republican we named a republican to replace them and the board of selectmen uh had a had a democrat and they 
um, name that Democrat to the board. In this particular case, I do have a couple of questions for you, Rebecca. When do you think the library could open for good? Uh, well, that um, <laughs> I don't know that I have enough information at this time to be able to make a recommendation on that. Um, I don't know. I would have to look up on the numbers. I would hope to be able to do that as soon as possible, but um, I don't have an answer for you at this moment. I would, uh, the reason I ask is because all libraries were just flat out closed uh, last summer during the uh, COVID crisis and the, uh, they were allowed to open around, I think it was, it was early October. I'll say, I think it was the third, but it was early October. And Ashford and Tolland and Stafford all opened. I believe Mansfield, I haven't checked on Mansfield. I'm pretty sure they opened. And we've had a little bit. We've had curbside service and we've had, uh, uh, I think there's a senior day that seniors can go there. There's a day which people can make, uh, reservations and go there. Uh, and I, I really would have liked to have seen something more. There was a message in the, uh, on Facebook from a citizen here in town a few days ago where they said, I wanted to read these two books and I called the library and they ordered these books for me. And I'd been wanting to read them since last year when they were on the bestseller list. And now I finally got them and that's all, all well and good. Uh, but we've had a lot of problems ordering books. And I wonder why these books were not already in, in the inventory since one of them had been on the bestseller list a year ago. Uh, we had some problems with a previous director, and I don't know if you're aware, aware of that, but anyway, he had $15,000 for the year he was there in the book uh, uh, budget, and he didn't spend much of it. He spent hardly all, of, well, he spent all of it, but he didn't spend it on books. We don't know what happened there. So this year we started again with $15,000. Now we're two thirds of the way through the year, and we spent $1,600, a little bit more than 10% of that. Uh, I keep hearing how this library has never been better than it is now, and I don't see that. Uh, we don't have a- All right. John, uh, I'm gonna a point of order. We're looking to uh, replace someone on the library board. Um, certainly we're not anticipating a member um, going to solve the, the year's worth of problems at the library without ever having um, sat as a, a member who can make change. So I, I'm, I'm going to ask you if there's a question for the potential candidate in there somewhere. You've aired your grievances of the library. Yes. The discussion was, did you have any questions for um, the, the individual who's put their name forth to be a member of the library board? Okay, I uh, will add one more sentence. We had a letter from the current, I think she's the director who, uh, who, who uh, is still not been named. She's the co-interim director and she uh, endorsed you to be on the library board. This was the last time the question came up. Uh, does this mean that you will vote to make her the director as she had, and she has made her, uh, made it clear that she intends to be the next director. Does this mean that you will uh, vote to, will feel obligated to vote for her to be the actual director? This is a question for me. Yes. Um, uh, no. No, I do not feel obligated to vote for anybody. I am completely independent at the moment. Thank you. All right. um, I'm going to make a motion. Uh, I'm gonna to move to appoint Rebecca Cartabiano to fill a vacancy at the Willington Library Board of Directors, effective February 17th, 2021, expiring at the next municipal election, November 2nd, 2021. 
Is there a second? I see Eliza seconding, although we cannot hear her. She's having technical difficulties. Any discussion? Um, Rebecca, I, I respect um, you sitting through uh, an airing of grievances um, against the library. There wasn't much of a question in there. Um, I will say that um, to John's point, the resignation was sent to the town clerk's office. The town clerk then disseminates information. Um, I do not know who she responded to. It was not in an email to myself. I received an email with just my name on it. Um, so I don't know that this was or was not sent to any one um, political individual, although it is not a requirement. Um, to be a member of one of the two major parties in Willington in order to serve on a, a board. Rebecca has come forward um, without uh, political affiliation. Um, and actually what I see is her affiliation to the town of Willington and wanting to serve um, the citizens of Willington in the library and, and work on behalf of the library. And, and I fully respect that. The only letter we received in this particular appointment that we're looking at now that I referenced um, came from Karen Ann Caldwell and Karen Ann spoke here publicly this evening. So um, I thank you for your willingness to potentially serve the, uh, pending the outcome of this vote. Any other discussion, John or Liza? I going to go with your uh, with your experience and hope that we can work together. I will I will vote in favor. Liza, any discussion? No, we can't hear you. <laughs> okay, Liza has not. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Oh, now we can hear you. Oh, what happened? What changed? I don't know. A bark. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now you can hear that, can't you? Okay. I have, have no questions regarding no questions. Okay. Um, All right. Seeing none, I will call for a vote on the motion that's on the floor. Lessington. Aye. Barrett. Aye. Wyszynski. Aye. With that, the motion carries. Um, Rebecca, um, before you can begin, and I'm not sure when their next meeting is. It may not be till um, next month. You have to be sworn in, um, but we will get information from our office to the town clerk and the town clerk will share with you um, what you'll need to do to get sworn in. And I appreciate your willingness to serve uh, on the Willington uh, Public Library Board. Thank you. And again, we welcome you to join the rest of our meeting, but will not be insulted if you choose to end your evening with us. Okay. All right, that moves us on to old business um, because we are still in the middle of a pandemic, I apologize here. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. I have an update for you on COVID. If you will bear with me one moment, I am just going to um, check our numbers to see if um, I have an opportunity to do that before this meeting. Give me one second. Okay, since we last met on February, whew, February 1st, um, our numbers have not gone up much. We have, uh, they've not gone up in a couple of days. Um, we currently have 208 COVID positive um, since the beginning of March with 13 probable cases. That is an increase of only 13 since our last meeting. So um, what we're seeing is a, a downward trend over the last um, couple of weeks. We think we're, um, the health department believes we're out of the upward trend we had coming out of the holidays. Um, and we remain hopeful that that continues. So we really have not seen a large increase. I think it's been sitting at 208 for a couple of days. Um, and, and I'm thankful um, while we've lost residents to uh, various other issues in, in town, we have not lost any other residents due to um, COVID-19. So. Let's hope that that continues. Um, on the vaccine front, this may be playing into some of that. We are still in phase 1B. The main difference since we last met is um, 1B now includes individuals 65 and up. Um, it was 75 and up and last Thursday, anyone 65 and over was eligible for a vaccine. The data from DPH, the Department of Public Health on vaccines thus far, 
which includes phase 1A, which were our um, medical personnel, medical first responders, um, and that 75 and up community. And I will tell you, it does not include the 65 and over because this data was of, of February 10th. Um, I believe it'll come out tomorrow. Um, is that we've had, we have um, Wellington residents have received 400 first doses of the vaccine. That's 6.82% of our population. And 135 of those were uh, our residents 75 and over. So 50% of our 75 and over residents had received a first dose as of last week. Um, and from what the governor shared um, at his four o'clock press conference, there really has been an uptick in those um, 65 and over. So really our most vulnerable population, um, we're starting to see some movement in vaccines. Our human services department is still assisting with seniors that need help navigating that system. So if um, anyone needs help, we'll continue to share here on our Facebook page, on our social media pages and on our website, the ability for them to just call human services at 480-487-3118. And um, Jenny and or Nan will help navigate the process and get you set up for a vaccine appointment. Again, if you're over um, 65, anyone in that phase 1A group would be going through the process with their through their employer. So this is really for those 65 and over who might have trouble navigating the very um, often difficult VAMS system, vaccine management system. Um, in addition, um, I'm working uh, with our, between our human resources and our um, state senator and representative on the potential to host a vaccine clinic here in Willington. Um, I, I was contacted about that. I'm waiting for more details. So I'll keep you posted on what could come of that. But if we can set up a clinic here in Willington to help administer some doses to residents here um, we, and do it safely, we will do so. I want to remind folks um, that while the town office is still closed um, to the greater public, we're still open and doing business. We are open by appointment. Um, at, we just ask that you call the department that you need prior to your visit. We'll set you up with a time so that we can manage folks in and out of the building. But with that said, we have not turned down anyone who has come to the town office building for something. Um, and Heather can attest to that. There's often times there's a knock on the door at somebody who still didn't realize we were closed, um, either needed to pick something up, drop something off, pay a tax, see the assessor. Um, and they have been served while they were here. It's, um, there have been a couple of times where they may have had to wait in their car, depending on the number of individuals in the building, but we have not turned anyone away. Um, so again, that's for the safety of residents and our um, incredibly small staff. But we do now have a doorbell at the front door. So the sign on it, so instead of just knocking, which can be harder to hear in our long spread out building, if you come by, click that doorbell, we'll hear you, someone will come to the door. Um, and it was a very minimal cost. So um, did not take a lot, but we finally broke down and, and added a doorbell so that we could hear it. Um, catch us on Friday to see if we regret putting in that doorbell. <laughs> But um, do you have any questions COVID related or operations related here at the town office building? Okay. Again, I would, while we would all love to have the doors open like normal uh, coming and going, the traffic flow through here is just not such that um, we, we could really do it uh, safely, nor do we have the additional staff to monitor um, comings and going, simply that the front entryway does not allow you to remain um, apart from each other. It's just one door. Um, so th this is the way we're working for now. I look forward to a time we can open safely to everyone and as vaccines um, continue to be distributed and our numbers continue to go down, we will continue to revisit that. All right. If there are no further questions, I will move to present to speak. Oh, uh, one more thing. We are starting to hear some rumblings out of Washington about federal dollars. There's a lot of work to be done there. Um, we're hearing that there'll be some money for municipalities in Connecticut. Um, we do not operate a county government like most states. There are a handful of states that do not operate a county government. 
And um, thus the, the way those dollars will be distributed will be a little bit different. The money is being distributed by county. So within the counties in Connecticut, it will have to then be distributed based on population to our municipalities. So while I've started to get some information on numbers, um, I, I won't put them out there yet because I just don't know exactly what they'll be for. Um, and I don't want to get our hopes up, but one of them was a large number over a million dollars and that would be nice. Um, but I don't, I don't know that to be true. And I think they have a lot of work to do in Washington before we put our hopes on any dollars for the town of Wellington. But I'll keep you up to date as those numbers come in. All right. With that, I'll move to present to speak unless John or Liza want to ask or share anything else. All right. Again, if you are present to speak, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Do not have to be on camera. I ask that uh, you state your name for the record and limit yourself to two minutes. Anyone present to speak? All right, well, I'm glad you joined us here, even if you don't have anything to say. I look forward to when we can speak, see your faces in person. So I will move on to good and welfare. And John and Liza, again, if you have anything for good and welfare, uh, uh, let me know and I'll make sure you can share. Um, again, you can find all the up-to-date COVID information from the state at ct.gov backslash coronavirus. All of the data that I read to you is there. Um, there, all of the vaccine updates, all of the daily um, positivity rates, hospital rates and, and death information are in there. They are now published only Monday through Friday. They don't do them on the weekends. Um, so, but everything is on that website um, in the phasing, the, the phases that we're in as far as um, businesses, et cetera, can be found on uh, ct.gov backslash coronavirus. The mobile food share will be this Wednesday, again at the town office building from 11 to 11.30. Um, it is a drive-through model for everyone's safety. And you can contact human services with any questions. It is open to every resident. Um, it is not simply based on uh, need. Um, and uh, I really, really need to thank the, the core volunteers that help our human services department. Um, they descend on the uh, town office building parking lot on Wednesday mornings very early. They're here long before 11 a.m. Uh, and they are a well-oiled machine. So we really want to thank um, our volunteers. Um, and some of them are, are from, a lot of them are from the senior center. So they're of our most vulnerable population. Um, they come out here and they make sure that everyone that is uh, in that line gets the um, necessary uh, food items that they needed. So thank you to them for their continued support. I don't know that we could um, do it successfully without them. Uh, remind you once again, if you are able to support our small businesses and restaurants, um, they certainly need our help. Um, I want to remind you that all of our town meetings are still virtual and can be viewed on our YouTube page in the link um, you can get to from our homepage, WillingtonCT.org. Uh, and on the left-hand side, if you see online board and commission meetings, click on that, it will take you to our YouTube page and you can view any of the uh, town board and commission meetings that are meeting um, by Zoom. We are still working. Um, hopefully soon we'll have um, the equipment to be able to start to host a hybrid. So you might not see me in here. You may see me in a meeting room. I may shift to a meeting room to test that out a couple of meetings um, so that when we're ready to go to a hybrid meeting, we'll be good to go. And um, I will mention that the Willington Day Committee had their first meeting. We sadly did not have Willington Day last year. Um, there's been discussion excuse me, for various reasons to move the date of Willington Day this year uh, to the end of August. So stay tuned um, for specific date, times, and details. Uh, this would move it away from Memorial Day weekend. Um, there are a multitude of reasons, uh, probably the biggest of which is that's three months away um, and not sure what our uh, restrictions would be. Um, and the amount of work uh, uh, that would have to go into hosting a safe event. So that, that committee is committed to hosting a, a safe uh, community event, um, although it may look a little bit different this year and it may not um, look that way in the future. Um, they're, they're committed to bringing something to 
kind of bring us together as a community in the safest way possible. So stay tuned for that. Um, you'll probably be seeing a save the date um, information. And if anyone's interested in joining the uh, Willington Day Committee, you can reach out to the Selectman's Office and we will put you in touch with Sarah Reese, who is the chair. Um, and one last note, I will mention uh, that yesterday we learned of the passing of a um, recent um, staff member, Robin McBriarty. So um, we'll keep her family in our thoughts and prayers. The town certainly has uh, lost many a citizen um, in, in this time, not just due to COVID, other things, but you know, Robin was a, a staff member here and we appreciate her, her um, all that she did and, and we were sad to hear of her passing. Anything else for good and welfare, John or Liza or Heather? Oh, go ahead. I have one thing more done. No, okay. Um, Robin was the proud daughter of a state police officer. So um, I'll end with our state police report. Um, for January, uh, with total calls for service in January were 334. I'm sorry if you see my strange face, it's because the total cause this year were 394, but last time I checked, January was the only month of the year. I won't ask, I'll just move forward and continue to read the report. Um, accidents, in, accidents in January were 14, criminal investigations 12, zero burglaries, one larceny, 250 uh, non-reportable matters, and a total of six arrests. My guess is there's some February numbers in here. Um, for motor vehicle enforcement, total traffic stops were 42. That uh, includes one on-site DUI, one arrest, zero misdemeanor summons, eight infractions, six written warnings, and 29 verbal warnings. I will remind um, residents to lock your vehicles, do not keep your personal belongings in your vehicles, uh, be cognizant of your surroundings, and when you believe there's danger or something to report, reach out to um, the police, the proper authorities. All right, with that, still nothing from John and Liza, I would move to, uh, oh, did you raise your hand? No. No, okay, I got excited. Um, I would move to adjourn at 7.13. I'll second. They both seconded. One we can hear sometimes, one we can't. All right, any, uh, it's a non-debatable matter. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.